Hi, this is Jay Prakash and thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve you. I'll just give a brief introduction of me and then I'll take you into direct experience of giving a transmission and taking you into a state of um, expanded state of awareness. And about me, um, a major shift happened a few years ago in which uh, the previous personality sort of left the body and then I realized myself as the um, creator consciousness and the source consciousness and then got anchored in this body. During that experience, the Merkaba spin was really fast, Merkaba the light body and um, there was a brief feeling of death which the previous personality experienced and it left the body and I an got anchored in this body with the knowingness of myself as the source just like you you are also the source and you have to just have the feeling you have to just have the experience once you expand into your greater awareness you will experience that and I am an explorer of this dimension states of consciousness and I do my level best to keep myself in balance and also help others to move into a state of greater balance so that we have a greater peace on this planet and that's all about me uh, let's go into the experience just make yourself very comfortable and it is going to be a transmission you have to just uh, relax observe and let the energy do its work be receptive and enjoy the process thank you this is a transmission it is from the masters of a higher dimension my own higher presence through my light body into your beingness it is to awaken your higher awareness and experience life with a higher awareness all you have to do is observe hello and let the energy do its work it is not very important that you understand each and every word that i say try to be aware but fall into your experience that is what is important Make yourself very comfortable. Let your body relax. Sit in an upright position with your spine straight. Shoulders relaxed. Relax your neck and head. and make yourself very comfortable observe your entire energy field your entire body Now bring your attention to the top of your head the crown chakra or the sahasrara I'll be emitting some sounds some energy just keep your awareness there and observe what happen
from the top of your head extend a beam of light or you can consider it as a channel open it up and be receptive for the higher energies to flow into you from the high dimensions observe the white light that flows into your head let the light come into your body and move to the center of your chest the heart region Now keep your awareness in the center of your chest. Let's open up your heart so you can experience greater awareness. Stay in your heart as I transmit some energy. Observe the shift that's happening in your beingness. Continue to keep your awareness in your heart region. Let the white light from the top of your head flow down to your entire body, reaching the base of your body, the root chakra. Observe the energy flowing from the top of your head, from the high dimensions to your head and to the root chakra. Observe. Come back to the center of your chest and keep your awareness there and let the energy flow, let the shift happen.
Now expand your awareness beyond your body, 5 to 10 feet beyond your body and observe the energy movement, the dynamic of the energy movement that happens there. Observe. This is part of your energy field, part of your light body. It has its own intelligence. Once you keep on shifting your awareness beyond your body and keep feeling the energy fields, you start to feel your light body and gets activated. Keep observing, expand. Get closer to your body, feel your body now. Expand again, 10 to 20 feet beyond your body and feel the energy field. Bring your awareness back to your body. Observe the difference in your state of mind, in the way that your emotions flow, the fluidity. Observe the greater balance that you have achieved. Bring back your awareness to the center of your chest. Let's allow some more shift to happen. Observe the central region of your chest. Observe the energy movements there. Expand now beyond your body. Let your awareness expand. Go 10 to 20 feet beyond your body and observe the entire field of energy. Observe.
back to your body. Feel your entire body. Observe the shift that has happened. Slowly bring back your attention to the center of your chest again. This is your home. This is where you experience your true beingness. This is where you go back again and again to find your inner peace and balance. This is from where the creation happens. This is where you reside for your complete balance. Thank you for being here at this moment of time on this planet and grounding your higher frequencies here. Let this technique help you find your balance in your daily life and help you ground your higher frequencies here. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve you. From my being to your being, I honor you. Thank you. Have a great time. Namaste. It gives immense pleasure of wisdom from the ancient living traditions of India. We are taught to take each and every situation that is presented to us as a boon, a gift and grace from the divine. Why so? Let us take this recent COVID phenomenon as an example. What this COVID has done is helped all of us to come together, utilize technology to reach out to each other like how we are reaching out now, establish connects with old friends, spend time with the loved ones for whom we have been slogging all along in life. So all of us were given a right perspective of life by nature and this has happened sheer by sheer grace. So in the Indian living tradition, we are made to understand that the cosmos, if we think of cosmos as divinity, the divinity works in five different ways. The first way is creation, which all of us know. The second way is sustenance and the third operational way is dissolution or destruction. This all of us are aware of the cycle, but there are the fourth and fifth operational areas of the divine, which are called the veil, the fourth one, 
and the fifth one is called the grace. So what is this veil? It is this veil which makes us to feel that if I achieve this promotion, life is going to be great and better. If I buy this home, I am settled for life. If I go to this foreign trip or have a vacation at a particular place, then I think I can tick something in my bucket list. So such is the way we are made to think that when we do something, we are going to become full. And that propels us into action, inaction, overaction and reaction. So this is the work of the way that which makes us feel that if we don't do that, we are incomplete. So this is a very, very important aspect for us to understand if we have to dive deep within and pursue the path of self-discovery. The fifth aspect of divinity's operational mode is called the grace. When someone sincerely asks within questions like, who am I? where I have come from, from here, where I would go. And these questions are coming out of complete earnestness and a desire to know the truth and be the truth itself. And it is at these junctions in our life or junctures in our life, we get to experience what is called as grace. Remember, grace is ever flowing. For example, you need an equipment like a radio to tune in to capture a particular station and the songs can be played for us. But whether we tune in or not, the songs are always there. So what we do is we sit down and tune ourselves to receive the grace. Like how we tune the radio to receive a particular station, receive news or listen to some songs. It is as simple as that. The tradition gives a lot of processes to tap this grace. Before we get to learn one of those processes, which should reach you somewhere in this recording, we also have to observe that we call this place as universe. Just spell it out. It is U-N-I plus V-E-R-S-E. -E. So what does this mean? We have to understand that this universe is just one verse in the Divine's book of infinite pages. This universe is just one verse in the divinity's book of infinite pages. So imagine the abundance which is available for us and by grace all of us are entitled to tap this abundance. So this is one important aspect to understand and this is also one of the reasons why the living traditions believe that it is always important to operate from the state of fullness, which is called Purnata, fullness, correct? Suppose someone comes to you and asks, give me hundred dollars. If you have, you would give. Otherwise, you would say, you know someone who can give them hundred dollars. In most likelihood, it's a bank, right? Why we do that? A bank has deposits and they are entitled to give based on our eligibility. Similarly, think of cosmos like a bank which has access to infinite wealth, infinite grace and infinite prosperity. So we need to make ourselves eligible and then learn how to tap this grace abundance and prosperity, which is available for each and every one of us living here right now. Hope this is very clear. So only we can receive from a source which already has everything. 
So the concept of fullness has to be very clear and enshrined in our vocabulary than trying to practice the state of emptiness. So what is that which is full can give us that which is empty, what can you expect from the state of emptiness? Nothing. Because that is empty. If it is full, there is something. So please be very clear. Something which is blank, it doesn't mean it is empty. Something which is blank because space is also full. Please remember this subtle point. So if we have to tap this grace, there is one simple word in English that we have to understand is awareness. Awareness is nothing but just being wherever we are, however we are and whatever we are and observe with a non-judgmental attitude what's happening around. Take an example of how a court would function. The judge would call upon both the parties presenting their case, but the main judgment is reserved till the judge hears out to the witness. So who is a witness? A witness is one, by definition, helps the judge to understand the sequence of events, how they unfolded, the people involved in the right way, the exact way how it happened. Similarly, for us to tap grace, the key quality which we have to develop within us is awareness. Today, mindfulness, heartfulness, the living in the now are some of the terms which are seen and heard by many of us. They are all nothing but derivations from the word awareness. Now, let us understand more about awareness and why accepting the state of fullness is a much practical way than trying to empty the mind. Mind is not just like a dustbin which has a limited shape and size that we use at our home and offices. Mind is like the tip of the iceberg. The conscious mind particularly is like the tip of the iceberg. The subconscious mind is very, very vast and big. And many estimate that 90% of our mind is subconscious and only 10% of the mind is conscious mind. So how in the world are we going to empty this or the empty the contents from the 90% of the subconscious mind? It may take ages, it may take lives. So what is mentioned in the tradition is somehow if the mind is allowed to develop that reality is infinite and what we see is infinite manifestations of that infinite reality. So it is futile to empty or try to even empty infinity. Just imagine if you are living in a say a 2000 square feet area, can we count the sand particles? Can we count the blades of grass which we see around? Can we count the leaves the trees in our campus have? Absolutely impossible, right? But how in the world are we trying to count the thoughts and empty the thoughts in the mind when their very nature is infinity? So this is the reason why in the tradition we always operate from the state of fullness and accept that reality is full not empty. This is a very, very important aspect for us to understand. So when you understand this, what happens? You just try and see whether can you be a witness to whatever which is happening around. If you are experiencing emptiness, so be it. If you are experiencing fullness, so be it. Because you are just a witness. Being empty or full no longer matter to you as long as you can live in the present moment, which is now, correct? So for all this, uh, we need to also have few processes. Till now, we have been understanding the concepts. 
this is another way in which the Indian living traditions are far different. They don't just share a concept, they also share a practice through which we can realize this concept. So as said earlier, at the end of this recording, you get to practice a particular beginner's level of yoga nidra, a very ancient practice mentioned in the Tantra scriptures of India. How yoga nidra works? Yoga nidra is a process of developing the attitude of witness, thereby we accept everything as it is. The state of acceptance is a precursor for the practice of yoga nidra. Yoga nidra works not just at the body level, but it taps the infinite potential our mind has and helps us not only in relaxation, it helps us to manage stress and also realize desires. Just recall the five aspects of the functioning of divinity, creation, sustenance, dissolution, veil and grace. So first of Yoga Nidra helps us to work with the concept of veil. What it does, it helps us to manifest a few desires that we have in life in a very organic way, in a very systematic way, by first calming down the body at the physiological level and preparing the mind in a very structured way to sow a seed which is your desire and through consistent practice you could see that seed flower as the desire that you wished in your life. Yoga Nidra helps us to realize a few desires that we have in life. Now revisit the concept of veil. What is a veil? A veil is something which is making us not to see the things as they are. It's like a curtain. All of us are walking around with some ideas which we feel when fulfilled or is going to make our life full. At the beginning of this recording, we saw that. That is the fourth aspect or the functioning of the divinity. So once a person starts to fulfill their desires using this ancient practice of Yoga Tendra, after a couple of desires get fulfilled, they understand that they do not need to bring down the practice of yoga nidra to manifest desires. Instead, use the practice of yoga nidra to deepen their experience of being a witness. Because whatever has to be experienced by us in this life will anyway happen to us if we think clear, act in the right way and accept that process orientation is more important, results will take care of themselves. For the simple reason that not only us, there are so many components from nature and the people as well as the situations which are there around us, which contribute to the results that we are going to experience because result is something which happens in future, not in now. In now, our only grasp is over the process and how we practice this process. Once we become aware, we start to live as much as possible in the present moment. Then the anxiety that we face to see something coming true in our life will be neutralized. Because we will always know that we can do whatever we can with the best of our abilities and whatever has to happen will happen in its own way. So with that content mindset, the flutters, the vagaries of the mind gradually comes under one's control. Now once the mind is calm and controlled, then it is fit to be a recipient of grace which is the fifth operating mode of divinity. All of us in the world today need to know how to tap grace 
irrespective of our caste, creed, religion, gender, or culture. Because knowledge and truth is common to all of us. The processes may differ based on the region of the world we come from. But all of us need peace. All of us feel that prosperity has to be experienced. For all this to happen, we need to develop the ability to sit quiet so that we allow the grace to fall upon us. So before we start the practice of Yoga Nidra, we need to understand that Yoga Nidra which is provided along with this recording is not a full and complete version. It is an introductory version. Why so? Immediately if I or anyone asks us to stay quiet, be still and do nothing, gradually we tend to sleep. So one needs to build capacity, build the mental stamina to stay alert and aware throughout the practice. So the process given to you here is a preparatory process to the standard Yoga Nidra which is practiced in the tradition. What can happen to us when we practice this Yoga Nidra which is part of this recording? You could experience a sense of calmness. The body relaxes, not just at the physical level, but at the physiological level as well. You will experience a steady flow of breath, which in return quietens the mind naturally. So using this simple process of Yoga Nidra, we learn to calm ourselves at the mind and body levels, as well as prepare ourselves to practice higher levels of this very same process. A background on this process. This process was brought to us by Swami Satyananda, who out of his infinite compassion found that the world would need a lot of processes from the system of yoga than just the practice of asana and pranayama. The world and its affairs are getting increasingly complex. This process was brought up by him to teach his disciple, Swami Niranjan. Later, all of those students who were present there in the 1960s at the Bihar School of Yoga. Now, let us have a glimpse of the process. Now, let's practice the process of Yoga Nidra. Ideally, you need to pause this recording now. Get your yoga mat, spread it out, or spread a blanket or a carpet, and prepare yourself to lie down like a corpse, completely still, absolutely motionless but with a gentle smile on your face and with closed eyes. Some of you may feel that you may slip into sleep if you lie down and listen to a soothing voice. So you could choose to sit on a recliner or a chair where you can stay still till further instructions to move your body. So again, let me request you to pause this and prepare yourself before proceeding further. Thank you. Now, body is absolutely still and steady, alert and aware. Eyes are gently closed, but there is a gentle smile on your face. If you are lying down, let your heels be at least two and a half feet apart from each other so that the low back completely rests on the mat and it relaxes. Let your hands be slightly away from the body. Once you do that, you'd experience the shoulder to 
relaxes. Adjust your neck so that the head is reasonably comfortable. And now let there be a gentle smile on your face throughout the practice. A gentle smile will help you to retain your awareness to the present moment. It helps you to hold your mind to the present moment and facilitates better practice of this process. <clears throat> now, just be aware of the various sounds around you. Each of you could hear different sounds depending on the time zone and the country that you live in. With a smiling face and still body, just be aware of the sounds as and when they happen. Sometimes the mind would preempt and think which could be the next sound, what could be the pattern of the present sound. So tell your mind, you are training it to be a witness. All it needs to do is to maintain a smiling face and a still body. Till the end of the process, thinking is being suspended and just being in the present moment is activated. Allow your mind to be aware of each and every sound around you. It could be a known sound, unheard of before, or a rhythmic sound from the wall clock, a chirp of a bird, or an insect. Or the vehicle passing by or the sound of your air conditioner or people talking around or someone listening to a radio or watching television. Remember, you are a witness. A witness is one who observes things as they are. Let whatever happen, happen. When we adopt this mindset, we allow ourselves to keep the remote control of the emotions with ourselves. So whichever sound that happens, so be it. Just be aware of it. For some of you, the mind would travel elsewhere. Gently remind yourself you are attempting to practice the process of yoga and develop the ability to be a witness. Keep getting your mind back to the awareness of sounds around you. Now, gradually become aware of the entire body that is lying down either in the corpse pose or seated on a chair or recliner. Whichever position or whichever place where you are, ensure that stillness and steadiness are part of your body right now. Now be aware of your right thumb. 
right index finger, middle finger, right index finger, right little finger, the right hand, right palm, right wrist, right forearm, right elbow, right upper arm, right shoulder, right shoulder blade, the space between the right shoulder blade and the right hip, the right buttock, right thigh, the right knee, the right calf, right ankle, right sole, the right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, right little toe. Ensure that you are aware and awake. Now gradually become aware of the left thumb, left index finger, middle finger, ring finger, left little finger. Be aware of the left hand, left palm, left wrist, left forearm, left elbow, left upper arm, left shoulder, the space between the left shoulder and the left hip, left buttock, left thigh, left knee, left calf, left ankle, left sole, the left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, and the left little toe. Ensure you are aware and awake.
Now, once again, check whether the smile is intact and body is absolutely still and steady. Now gradually become aware of your breath. Observe, observe how breath enters and exits the body. Ensure the mouth is closed and breathing is happening through the nostrils. Again, remind yourself that you are a witness. So allow breathing to happen and allow yourself to observe the process of breathing whenever it happens. Sometimes there could be a deep pause between inhalation and exhalation. It's absolutely okay. All you need to do is to just be a witness of the breathing process. If the mind goes elsewhere, get your mind back to the breathing process with a gentle smile. Continue to keep your eyes closed and maintain stillness of the body. Now, from the breath, bring your awareness back to the body. And from the body, become aware of the various sounds around you. Now, as you are aware of the sounds around you, give gentle movements to your toes and fingers and prepare the body to come back to a seated position if you are lying down. If you are seated, still you can keep your eyes closed, but give gentle movements to your toes and the fingers. Now interlock your fingers and take the hands above the head and as you inhale give a nice stretch. Those of you who are lying down can also get your legs together and stretch your body and as you exhale relax. Practice this inhalation, stretch during inhalation and relaxation during exhalation couple of more times at your own breathing pace. Now if you are seated, you could practice palming, that is rub your palms, generate some heat and make a cup of your palms, place them over your eyelids. Transfer the warm sensation. Practice it two to three times. And before you open your eyes, hold your palms like a book before yourself. Look at the palms with few blinks. Familiarize your eyes with the luminosity around. And then feel free to look anywhere. Those of you who are lying down, 
also could place the left palm on their abdomen, bend their left leg, turn to the right, straighten the legs, place the left palm before the chest on the ground or the mat, and very gently with the help of your hands, come up to a seated position, and practice palming as instructed earlier. Now, again, I would request you to pause this recording for a few seconds and maintain silence for at least 30 seconds. and then come back to listen to the concluding minute of this recording. As you do all this, thank your mind and body and the cosmos and the organizers of this wonderful series of learning So what the practice of Yoga Nidra does? It first gives us the remote control of our emotions back to ourselves because we start to understand that there are n number of things that can happen around us which we were allowing to impact on us without filtering which to be allowed and which not to be allowed. So once we practice this process of yoga nidra in a consistent way, it helps us to develop awareness, thereby we become better witness to the life around and the thoughts within. The more we are in witness, the more we are prepared to face whatever happens to us in life. Gradually, at higher levels of practice, Yoga Nidra would help us to realize our deep desires which we think that define us and our very life. Remember, at some point, we need to move ahead beyond the stage of manifesting desires to living a life of just be so that grace can be tapped to conclude the practice of Yoga Nidra helps us to develop a state of witness, thereby being mindful becomes more easy than ever before. The more we are mindful, the better our life is, better are the ways we will understand how life works, how grace is ever flowing, and we become more eligible to tap that grace, utilize it for ourselves, and share for those who may be in need of it and who are seeking it. That's it from us. Thank you. Namaste. Have a great year ahead. A big hi to all. Kindly do excuse if the sound conditions are not the best. So uh, there's a specific thing uh, that I would like to address today. Um, that's what I call it as a walk away and walk towards uh, technique. Now, the mere act of walking, you know, holds special significance in our human journey and uh, in my own personal experiences too. Walking is all about movement and it is with this movement that a stillness of mind can be achieved, which is 
not different from the results of deep meditation using any other technique. Now, when we speak of walking uh, here, it is not just limited to the physical walk. This walk can be completely in our minds. A combination of these or even one of them exclusively can achieve uh, the desired results. Now, the other aspect of this technique is the effort required by oneself. You know, mental or physical, there needs to be an effort from our side. Without any effort, there are no results. Now, one of, uh, just sharing something uh, from my own uh, life. One of, one of my fondest experiences involves, uh, you know, walking with my grandfather. Um, he had a small business in the village. I mean, just you guys, the way he ran it, I mean, I think it was more for, you know, connecting with people than actual business. <laughs> but um, during some holidays, I would drop in on him, uh, especially in the afternoons, and I accompany him back home late evening. Uh, home was in the middle of a farm, which is like a good five kilometers uh, away from there. And we would always walk back, you know. Uh, so almost one third of the way, uh, another path forked into a lightly wooded patch which again converges in about 600 meters. And this is where, you know, I would go on another path and we would, you know, have a walking competition. Um, I mean, it was our moment and the world would fade away, you know, and the kind of the things we shared in those walks is, um, it just, just keeps me going. So later on, I have shared walks with others, you know, who have been real close to my heart, including my pets. Over the years, I have taken several walks with myself on different paths and thoughts. Now, there has not always been a solution which has come out, you know, from these, but I have always come out with, you know, much better clarity or I'm a bit more calmer or just with enough strength to put up a good fight against obstacles, you know. So, uh, and these have been the ins inspiration behind this technique. So today, if someone asks us, what's the value of your life? I mean, most of us would probably start thinking in monetary terms. Now, how did we ever reach this stage? Is that the only value that is seen in our lives? What about all those moments we have genuinely smiled, you know, from the bottom of our hearts? I mean, what about those moments we thought of something and the next moment we forgot what that was, but there's a kind of bliss that we did not forget for a long time, you know? So what can actually make us value these? So we need to take a complete, we need not take a complete break to realign ourselves. We can have these small pauses, you know, which will help us do this. With this walk away and walk towards technique, even a rank beginner can benefit. Physical well-being and mental well-being are interconnected in the most basic way that a small imbalance in one can affect the other. When you practice this technique, you will have moments of self-discovery, which will challenge and surprise you about your own self. What someone said or thinks about you would suddenly pale away and look really insignificant. Before sharing how you could practice practice this technique, let me share a poem with you. The title of the poem is Acceptance. As my body sat frozen, my mind moved around, sometimes gushing as torrents of energy. The waters in them seem clear, but the undercurrents strong was easy to be swept away by the currents of my own thoughts as the waters, waters washed away the debris. They also revealed layers stacked which remained unexplored. Some really better buried and forgotten, assimilating peace and serenity where far away mountains heard only in stories, secrets to which you felt would never be accorded to the soul. Deeds by others were like the dams that sucked away and stopped your life force. Stagnating and gasping for air, they proved enough time for reflection, even though painful. Acknowledgement and acceptance within 
Suddenly the boulders fell away like sheer fabric in a strong wind. I watched with relief, it was just a start. On a new journey of conquests over conflicts and embracing love for what, what it was. Now that was the last line. Each of our journeys are different and as such acceptance of where we are at the moment is the start point. So continuing on, how do we practice this walk? So I would say set up our, you know, a minimum of 30 minutes each day, or if that's too much to ask, even once a week would do. Now it's best practiced out in nature or the outdoors. I mean, if you can't go out, then find an open space at your home or workplace where you can get some light. If possible, try to be there for the sunrise. If you're not an early person, that's okay too. Do so at night, but well after the sun has set and soak in light from the moon and the stars. Start off at a leisurely pace. You know, no need to push yourself. And try to concentrate on your breathing. You know, try breathing from your abdomen and not the chest. That's the best way you could do that. Sometimes when we are not concentrating much, we end up breathing over here, which is not really that great and does not help us. So try breathing in from your abdomen. So when you start, you know, doing this, even the harshest sound in the urban jungle kind of fades away. If concentrating on your breathing seems tedious, then start counting each step that you take. And then make sure you're planting your feet in the right manner. You know, these things, you know, start taking up, you know, your the space in your mind. And in the beginning, this may seem tedious or even counterproductive. For the first five minutes, and then you will start to ease into it. When you reach up to the 20th minute, probably the counting would be just like one, 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 and not the exact number of steps that you have taken. I mean, that's okay. We are not trying to you know, get a real count. Um, we have enough apps for that today. Our objective is to develop a connect with our mind and the nature around us. That's what we are aligning to. This allows us to disengage ourselves from worldly worries. And not only that, we also begin to differentiate and concentrate our energies on the right things and expend them on that. Now, the whole 30 minutes may not see you reach a stage where all things fade off, but only give you moments. Now, these are precious and have far-reaching impact on how we feel. Going on ahead, you will achieve longer periods of this state. If the area you're walking in is safe, try and walk barefoot. That's a different sensation at together and the way you can connect with nature is tremendous. This always gets you better results. But if the environment is not conducive for you even to go outside due to the pandemic or for any other reason, then find the most comfortable chair at your home or, or your office. Set it up in a place with good ventilation Then plonk yourself on it. Natural light is good, but if at night, then dim the lights a bit. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself in the place you find the most beautiful and then start walking in your mind. Do the same as earlier to guide your mind into the stage. It works real, it works equally well. Now that's as basic and simple as this whole thing gets. Now let me tell you a small story. Right now, there's this one rich person in a village, but he was a total miser. He had never done any good for others, you know, not thought about it. He felt it was a waste of time and money. The miser and his wife had a child after more than a decade, and they were overjoyed. Now, in this, he announced a feast for all the villagers. They came with good wishes and a feeling that he had finally changed. Of course, it did surprise a lot of them and some of them still skeptical. 
so many people came that they had to accommodate in two big halls. You know, one was not enough. Banana leaves were laid out, and you know, one laddu, an Indian dessert, was served on each leaf to the guests. The miser came in and announced that they can have their fill. And as they finished one laddu, another laddu would be served. Now the villagers could not contain their joy, and they could not believe what they heard. But then the miser continued his announcement. He said, "All this that you meet these two conditions. Now they are all years. Now what is this? First, he said that they could not bend their elbows when they eat, right? And the next, they could not bend down and eat from the leaf. And saying that he left." Now people are left wondering, you know, they kept kept trying all different ways. I mean, if you can't bend your elbow, you know that, right? How do you, you know, you can't get it. So they tried different ways. Um, some even threw the ladu up in the air and tried to, you know, catch it. But to no avail. I mean, finally they get really, I mean, they got really frustrated and they just left. In the other hall, the same kind of scenario was being played out until a girl decided to do something radical. Uh, she had been thinking and or not being able to feed herself, uh, I mean, which was one of the miser's conditions, based on based on what happened because of that. Then she decided to feed her neighbor instead, right? So pick it up. Then the neighbor fed her a laddu, and soon enough, the miser's cook just couldn't keep up with the laddus being had by the villagers. So, why the story? Here, sometimes we are loath to do anything for ourselves. I mean, however surprising it may seem, you know. But human nature is such that we are that much more ready to help others. When we start helping others without hoping for anything in return, we actually end up helping ourselves. Right? The girl fed the ladu to him. Or her next the the, her, the neighbor without thinking of anything, and the neighbor fed her in return. Right? She she had the sweet which she didn't expect that she would get. So, not just yourself, but start taking these walks with your friend, your neighbor, a colleague, in a park on the sidewalks, or even over the phone. Might sound you know, but yes, it's possible. And at all that you know don't even go for a walk I and mean, just pitch a ball play a video game anything at all that engages you and your mind and you know gets you into that zone you know i think that's that's the most important thing so you know because, because all, all of this, this actually let it takes your mind off the stress strain demands and gives you those little moments of peace and love that over time add up to a whole lot i hope this has had some value and been able to even give you a moment of that peace and joy would be overjoyed. Thank you so much. Namaste everyone. This is Roshni Shanaz from Mumbai, India. My spiritual voyage started in 2009 in the most inconspicuous ways that turned up the wave by 2010 as I saw myself where universe was pushing me from this absolutely bright and shining glamorous world of films and media to God. I attribute this change or this emerging or opening up of my gifts to my life death illness in 2005 2006 which left me immobilized partially for about 10 months and thereafter it completely wiped me below ground zero in finances in relationships in everything possible Every new construction can only and only be put up after the demolition of the old. 
after the cleansing of the debris and then digging deep of hundreds of feet into the earth the new building is brought about and that is what life is for each one of us on this powerful day of the winter solstice of 21st december 2020 it gives me immense pleasure to share my gifts through the joining forces of light event i thank my brother amir mohsen from kuwait for inviting me to join this festival of sharing our individual gifts for the world the energetic gateways opening for humanity today are gripping forces of the universe that are propelling a stronger surge of energy each day for us to know acknowledge and embrace the real inner truths of life truth in literal sense is very subjective my friends my truth may be different from yours but yet we take it to be the ultimate truth of life the reason is a lack for a better word for our illusory perceptions which ultimately move on to become our so called truth we live not in the real inner truth of our being but in and through our narrow observations of the perceived truth around us the energies for the next 5 decades are highly crucial as we move into the dimensions of the new humanity the self which has to unravel all its mysteries and answers inside while it dives deep to catch that pearl of life to meet and awaken the god within but before moving there we need to prep ourselves for exploring and accepting this renewed human that we are going to emerge as not through becoming something new but through the unbecoming of the old that needs to shed away to be moved away to be discarded as it serves us no more can you or would you operate on an older version of a software after downloading the newer version most good software overrides the older version but some software hangs on to the older version which is like the comfort zone of our existence but all change is change only when we have broken out of our cozy cocoons and taken the flight towards our real inner truths of life most times people are leading a fragmented life torn apart you know in these different windows of the emotional the mental the physical and spiritual living life is misaligned between our external outputs and internal actualities and between our physical and spiritual pursuits between the honoring of your personal professional and me time life so today i shall take you through this potent dynamic healing meditation journey of aligning to your inner truths of life to integrate your mind body emotions and spirit with the one love one light and one truth of the creator in all areas and aspects of life to gather your fragmented being and make it whole and you know traverse that path to create your own pathway to the light to be a renewed human this meditation shall help you drop all toxic masks facades fears and non acceptance for the flow of life so that you can embrace support your seven key inner truths and also to lovingly and fearlessly express it into the world it shall give you the conviction and confidence to believe in your own truths first how can i make somebody else believe this truth if i myself am in disbelief or doubts about it right so it shall help you to not only accept and acknowledge 
but speak them internally and externally now look for a comfortable position and keep some water next to you sit or lie down as you feel totally relaxed create a little softer ambiance around you you may dim your lights have some candle or incense in a safe distance around you or some diffusing aroma oil that soothes your nerves or elevates your soul please use any of these elements with caution and as per your personal likes or necessities do not do this process or any kind of meditation while driving cooking handling or being around any hazardous ignitable items or any kind of such material wearing loose easy clothes helps in the good flow of the prana the chi or commonly known as the life force energy so get ready i give you a few moments and as you get ready close your eyes and completely relax your entire body from your head to your toes we begin to relax from the head area loosen your head your face muscles your neck your arms your back your chest your stomach your hip area your legs your feet and your toes wonderful now as you relax and loosen up your entire body you should start taking some deep breaths breathe in 2 3 4 4 breathe out 2 3 4 Breathe in two, three, four deeply. Breathe out two, three, four. Keep breathing deeply for a few moments, and with every inhale, imagine all the love, light, and healing, wisdom of the divine Creator permeating you. With every exhale imagine all the unserving aspects of life moving out with your breath. Keep breathing with these intentions till I ask you. And with every breath you shall feel as if you are sinking deeper and deeper into the place where you are seated now as you do that take your intention to the center of your chest area to your heart chakra the energy center for governing all positive and love based energy taking the focus there feel or imagine the presence of any higher being and power that you believe in or a master and if you don't have any then simply imagine the power of your own existence as this magnificent creation that you are 
Feel your breath as we move ahead. When you feel, see or intend this power within the center of your chest area in the heart chakra, you shall intend or imagine two translucent selves of you sitting on the opposite side, one to your left and one to your right. The one on your opposite side left is your higher self, the higher consciousness, your spirit. And you shall imagine it in transparent, glorious white light. And the one on your opposite right side represents your ego mind and you shall imagine it in a transparent, translucent grey that may at the beginning seem mucky, dull or depleted. As you see these two parts of you, we call upon the love, healing and wisdom of the Creator to lift, dissolve and heal all the toxins and representations of everything that serves you no more. We pray that all such be replaced with emotions, energy and beliefs of everything that is for your highest best to surface and imprint your inner truths. Take three deep breaths as you get ready to begin the process. Breathe in, out. Breathe in, out. Breathe in, out. With each truth, Keep feeling the energy moving upwards from the bottom of your spinal area, which is your root chakra, to the center top of your head area, which is your crown chakra. Keep your palms open, facing the ceiling. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the first truth. Faith. Look at the transparent grey version of you on your opposite right side and see, feel or imagine the word fear appearing on it. Fear appearing on this grey self sitting opposite you on the right side. As this word grows in intensity and size, you shall now shift your intention to your opposite left side self and affirm this statement after me. Within your higher consciousness of the spirit that is represented through the transparent white self. My inner truth allows me to move from fear to faith. Feel the power of the words. My inner truth allows me to move from fear to faith. Keep repeating this truth till you see or intend the word fear completely disappearing from your transparent grey self.
Great. And as the word totally fades out and disappears from your mind's eye, take three deep breaths as we move to the next one. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the second truth, contentment. Look at the transparent gray version of you and see, feel or imagine the word unfulfillment appearing on it. Unfulfillment. As this word grows in size and intensity, you shall now shift your intention slowly to the opposite left side self and affirm this statement after me within your higher consciousness of the spirit that is represented through this transparent white self of you on the left side. My inner truth allows me to move from unfulfillment to contentment. My inner truth allows me to move from unfulfillment to contentment. Feel the power of this truth spreading all over you. Keep repeating this truth in your mind till you see, feel or imagine the word unfulfillment completely disappearing from the transparent gray self. Keep focusing on it till it totally disappears. Amazing. See it totally gone. And as the word totally, completely fades out and disappears from your mind's eye, take three deep breaths as we move on to the next one. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the third truth, loving power. Look at the transparent gray version of you and see, feel or imagine the word weakness appearing on it. Weakness. As this word grows in size and intensity, you shall now shift your intention to the opposite left side self and affirm this statement after me within your higher consciousness of the spirit that is represented through the transparent white self of you. My inner truth allows me to move from weakness to loving power. My inner truth allows me to move from weakness to loving power. Keep repeating this truth till you see, imagine or intend the word weakness completely disappearing from the transparent gray self.
feel and keep your focus as God's love erases out the entire energy. Great. And as the word totally fades out and disappears from your mind's eye, take three deep breaths as we move on to the next one. You shall notice that as you keep accepting and embracing each of the seven truths, the gray self of you is slowly getting clearer and cleaner and moving towards becoming white in color. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the fourth truth. Selflessness. Look at the transparent gray version of you and see or feel the word selfishness appearing on it. Selfishness. As this word grows in size and intensity, you shall now shift your intention to your opposite left side self and affirm this statement after me within your higher consciousness of the spirit that is represented through the transparent white self of you. My inner truth allows me to move from selfishness to selflessness. My inner truth allows me to move from selfishness to selflessness. Keep repeating this till you see intent or imagine the word selfishness completely disappearing from the gray version of you. Beautiful. And now as it completely fades out and disappears from your mind's eye, take three deep breaths as we move on to the next one. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the fifth truth, honesty. Look at the transparent gray version and see or feel the word dishonesty appearing on it. And as the intensity of this word grows, shift your focus to the left side white self version of you and affirm this statement after me through your higher consciousness the spirit represented by that white version my inner truth allows me to move from dishonesty to honesty My inner truth allows me to move from dishonesty to honesty. Keep repeating this truth till you see the word dishonesty completely erased and dissolved from the gray version of you. And as it completely gets erased, take three deep breaths as we move to the next one. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the sixth truth, self-control. Look at the transparent gray version of you 
and feel the word indulgence appearing on it. And as the word indulgence grows in intensity, shift your mind's eye to the left side, to your higher consciousness. And repeat the statement after me. My inner truth allows me to move from indulgence to self-control. My inner truth allows me to move from indulgence to self-control. Keep repeating this truth until you see or imagine or intend the word indulgence completely erased and dissolved from the surface of your transparent grey version of you. It takes great courage to erase these misconceptions and perceived truths from our life. And as you raise this sixth one totally, take three deep breaths as we move on to the next one. You shall now notice that the gray self is almost similar to the white self of your higher consciousness. We now begin to heal, declare and imprint the last and the most authoritatively prevailing seventh truth, oneness of all existence. Look at the transparent grey version of you and see, feel or intend the word separation appearing on it. As the word grows in size and intensity, shift your focus to the version on the left side, your higher consciousness, represented through the white version of you, seated there. Repeat the statement after me, through your higher consciousness. My inner truth allows me to move from separation to oneness of all existence. My inner truth allows me to move from separation to oneness of all existence. Keep repeating this truth till you see the word separation completely disappearing from your transparent grey version which is almost white now. And as the word completely fades out, take three deep cleansing breaths. And as you do that, intend and imagine both the left and the right self of you totally filled with shimmering white light and filling you up completely. Both those selves and your physical body is covered in the shower of this shimmering white light. Take a few more deep breaths and as you take these breaths, you shall see the two transparent selves merging into one another and coming towards your physical body until all three of them have completely merged. Feel this total integration of your mind, body and the spirit, your higher consciousness. And as you merge all three together, 
It integrates and anchors you in the one love, one light, one truth of God, our Creator. And as this light fills you up in entirety, imagine yourself spreading the rays of this light just like the rays of the sun into the world and into the universe. Feel the vibrations going out into the universe until you reach a point where you are the center dot speck of this entire vibrations that have spread into the universe. You are the central point of existence of this luminance. The luminance of your real inner truths that shall now shine into the world. You shall keep spreading your inner light and your real inner truths into the world from now on. We give gratitude to God, the universe, the archangels, the angels, the guides, the masters and all divine beings for facilitating this process. Count from five to one in your mind after me as we move to the closure of this meditation. Five, four, three, two, and one. Rub your palms and after considerable rubbing of the palms, put them onto your eyes. Feel the warmth and the divine love. Then slowly move your palms away from your eyes and soak in this comfort of God's love compassion and mercy. Thank you to your soul for going through this process. This meditation can be done daily or weekly to live a life that becomes an inspirational example of the real inner truths of our lives. For the new humanity and you become the torch bearer for this paving of the path ahead. When you put these truths into practical reality is the time when you shall really be able to guide and spread this light to many more. So Namaste once again. This is Roshni Shanaz. I thank you for being with me. Stay blessed, loved and protected in love and light and super duper Godspeed. Thank you so much. Love you all. Jai Baba. My name is Arul Dev and uh, would like to share a practice which is a combination of mindfulness, very deep inner body work, spirituality, in a very neutral, universal way. It is how we can go within the different parts of our body and the consciousness there which obviously will have its entanglements and limitations and strengths, is how we can move our inner gaze and awareness within the very tiny regions of each part of our body and its consciousness. And from there open to certain spiritual or universal well-being qualities like vastness, like peace, like grounding, like healing, like that. 
and allow these to slowly mold our being in natural and organic ways. That's what we're going to explore. So I'll share and do the practice along. You could join me if you like, and that way we will get a tangible taste of whatever I'm sharing. Much of what I'm sharing now is part of the book, The Flame Within, which is an exploration of the body and its consciousness and a natural path of healing and transformation. There are three parts to this method. The first is the natural breath. In this method, we use the natural breath that is flowing all the time within us as a very potent tool to come to the present moment. To just come to the present moment. Across the world, breath is one of the most popular tools. And there are many kinds of breath work. You know, some modulate breathing and you know, there are many, many, many techniques and forms of breath work. This one, I learned it from my, I, I learned it from several people, but it got fine tuned when I was doing a workshop by my guide, Dr. Vandana. Actually, the whole thing began, this whole method that I'm sharing with you. When on the second day of the workshop, she said, now, watch the natural breath touch your thought region. And I was like, what? And that's when this whole journey began very deep. And uh, I've been sharing this for a while. So the first practice goes like this. You can do it with eyes closed or eyes open. You could begin to do it now. Bring your awareness to your natural breath and either watch your natural breath or even better still, just be with your breath. Be with your natural breath. Just be with your natural breath. That's all. However it is flowing, you be with it. Now, we will get distracted. Thoughts will come and grip our attention away. No problem. How many ever times a thought grips you, just the second you recognize that the thought has taken over you, bring your attention back and almost in a space of very intimate connection, very intimate adoration, place your attention back on the natural breath and be with it and be with it for however, however time you want. So now we'll practice this for two minutes. Now, in real time, you can do this practice with eyes open. You can do it for 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, or you can sit and do it with eyes closed, five minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Slowly, this brings more capacity for present moment awareness. 
by itself watching natural breath is like water it purifies our being and strengthens our being so this is the first practice the second practice is really learning to connect to the universal consciousness all around us and partaking its properties partaking its qualities within us that's the second step the third step is to how to use that connection to allow the body to naturally heal and transform so the second step has four subdivisions so the first one a quick summary first one would be to connect to the consciousness above the mind the second part would be to connect to the consciousness in the cave of the heart the third would be to connect to the consciousness at the sole of the feet and the ground and the fourth would be to connect to the consciousness which is the vastness and wideness that exists all around us we will do it in parts now place your awareness on top of your head or a little bit above and just leave it open upwards into the space or into the consciousness the wideness and the vastness of this consciousness and just wait and just wait and just wait that's it so you can start doing it you can close your eyes place your awareness on top of your head or just a little bit above and just leave your awareness open into the vastness and the wideness And just be like that. If thoughts take over, just go back into the vastness and wideness above, and just be like that for a few minutes. okay like this if we keep doing slowly the connection with the above the mind the intuitive consciousness gets built and we will start partaking or imbibing some of the qualities that are universally present here like silence peace vastness wideness light or even divine presence Now let's do the second part of the step 2 connecting to the consciousness at the depth of your heart the cave of your heart so keeping your awareness on the surface of your heart which is basically the emotional heart drop inward drop inward drop inward drop inward till you come to a space which is rather quiet feels like a flame feels like a silent aspiration feels like an eternity in a tiny space 
whatever you get, even one percentage of it you get is fine. Just connect to the quality in the deepest cave of your heart and just unite with it, unite with it, unite with it. And if you get distracted, just drop your awareness with it. Now, by doing this, we we'll connect to our inner guide and we can live life in a very calm, centered way, untouched by anything. Of course, we'll be touched or entangled and that's the surface part. So this brings an inner practice for us. If you're getting entangled, drop in. If you're getting entangled, drop in. And by conscious repetition of this practice, slowly our connection with the inmost consciousness comes forward. This is the second poise. Third poise. Connect to the sole of your feet. Feet, if this is your feet, this is the sole. Connect to the sole of your feet. Go within it. And sense. What is the quality that is here? You can start doing it. Some of the things that people say here is the quality of groundedness, healing or delight. So stay here, whatever you get and then open your awareness to the space below the ground, the earth and below the consciousness below just be aware of the vastness and wideness and remain very quiet you can be with your natural breath also the principle here being is as above so below so you wait with your awareness or inner gaze below till Something reveals here by itself, something sacred, something vast, something wide, something light, or even the presence of the divine. Wait and wait and wait.
by itself. This heals, transforms fears, enhances our evolution by a very steady practice and waiting to connect to something sacred here also. So this is the third part. Fourth, connecting to the wideness that is present all around and I'll guide. Close your eyes. Sensorially open yourself to the sounds. Whatever it is, good, bad, doesn't matter. We could do this practice even in the most busiest places. Doesn't matter. So using sounds, just open, open, open and leave your awareness into the farthest of sounds and sense the farthest of space in all directions. No matter what the sounds are, it doesn't matter. And then drop the sounds using your inner gaze. Take your awareness to the farthest infinite point on the left, right, front and back and just stay there with the wideness for a few moments. And if your attention gets lost, just bring it back to a very wide poise. Okay, by doing this, slowly we widen our being. The quality of consciousness of vastness and wideness becomes present. This is very good when we do it with nature. Then also we can use the visual field. Just let your eyes be open to the sky, to the dawn or the moon. This is also best done in the night with the cricket sounds, really expansion of our being. Now, a quick summary. The second one is placing our awareness above our mind, the depth of our heart, the depth of the feet and below, and the wideness all around. Slowly we could do all together. This is what we refer to as the source or the spherical consciousness, however you want to say it. How do we now use it for the transformation of our body, mind, emotions, energy? Very simple. Go part by part. Bring your attention to any part of the body. For example, your neck. The first step is to place your inner gaze within the small and the tiny regions of that part, say the neck and the vocal cords. So you always take the body and its con associated consciousness. For example, if you do it here, it's the forehead and the thought region. If you do it in the heart, it's the heart, it's the physical chest, and then the emotional space. First step is to go within the tiny regions, drop in, drop in, drop in, drop in. It's very good to be with the natural breath when you do it so that you are in the present moment. 
and simultaneously you are just open and aware of the vastness and wideness all around. That's soft. What this practice gives, it builds a bridge. It builds a bridge by we going inside and we are also there in the vastness and wideness. So by the process of osmosis, natural healing and transformation occurs. So you can do this in your own pace of going part by part within your body from head to toe. To just give a sample of the method, I'm just going to do it all together with the body so to just get a sample of the method and then you can do it on your own so close your eyes bring your awareness on the entire body which means you are present within your body and be with the natural breath for a few moments can go, which is going to do for two minutes, so you can go part by part or just go all together. Bring your awareness into the tiny regions of the body, within the flesh, within the space, within the muscles and tissues and the corresponding consciousness drop within, 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 with your natural breath and simultaneously all the time be aware of one or more of the source consciousness, that's it. And that's it. You could do this part by part. So to quickly summarize, the entire process is there in the flame within book, over 28 notes. First, be with your natural breath where it brings you to the present moment. Second, connect to these four source consciousness. They exist on their own. By we connecting, we are just blessed by their properties. Third, is a very minute awareness within our body and then slowly we can extend it to be aware of our emotions. The emotions are coming, we go within. Thoughts are coming, we go within. And from within, it is open to the vastness and wideness around. Build that bridge so that the transformation occurs. Thank you so much and uh, hope you got a tiny glimpse of this practice. Thank you. Guiding you through breathing meditation. We will be breathing into certain area in our body and you can use this breathing techniques wherever you are. We will start by taking three deep breaths together and then all through the break you can breathe on your own pace. Let's start. 
Inhale. And exhale. All breathing will be through the nose. We will be breathing through the body. If it helps to place your hand on the point where we will start breathing. If it makes it easier, you can just place your hand. We we'll start breathing from the heart. And you can place your hand or you can just keep your hand on your lap. Let's start breathing from the heart and expanding our love. In your heart to love, breathe love into your heart, feel the warmth, peace, joy. yourself and to others. Expand your love to yourself. Expand your love to everything surrounding you. Breathe into the heart. gonna move below above the navel. We're gonna breathe through this area. Give it some love and warmth. Send love with your breath to your body, to your beautiful body. Send love with each breath. Charge your area with love and peace and 
feel or sense how that I am now. We'll have a deep breath, we will inhale and hold our breath as much as we can and then release and exhale. Beginning now. more times. Inhale. Hold our breath. And exhale. Inhale. Hold our breath. Through the breathing, if you feel like moving, if you like spinning, just listen to your body and your body needs. Do whatever you feel like. Your body is talking to you. Now we will breathe below our navel where our dentian is. Inhale, expand your belly. Inhale, expand your body. Exhale. Now we'll place our hand backside for our kidneys. We'll open our hands, just place it where our kidney is. And direct your breath to the back side, to the lower back. Inhale through your back and extend the knees. We might stay longer here to release any stagnant energy. So let's start. Inhale. Do not think on how to direct your breath. Just believe in it. Trust that everyone can make it. Our body is so unique and so smart. Breathe into your back your lower back. Expand that area with breath. And give it love and attention and care. Send love and 
enjoy to your breath, to your lower back. Just simply by breathing into that area. Breathe, breathe deeper. And I want you to hold your breath. I want you to take a deep breath into your lower back and hold your breath. Two more time. Inhale. Hold. And exhale. One more time on your own pace. Inhale. Deep breath. Mm. And now like you to feel the light coming from your crown through your spine And I want you to breathe from the crown going all the way through your spine, your coccyx, your hips, your thigh, your knee all the way down to earth. Let's do that. Inhale from your crown. Direct your breath through your spine, going down and down. And while you're breathing down, Going down with your breath, I want you to feel your body, if there is any stiff pain, stagnant blockages, anything that seems to you uncomfortable while you're breathing. We'll do that three times, breathing from our crown to our 
towards earth, to our lower parts of the body. Do that again for three times. Breathe, inhale from your crown. Through your spine, direct your breath going down through your spine, your hips. Your thigh, your knee, your leg. And feel your space, feel your physical body. Let's do that again. Breathe from your crown. your breath through your spine down to your hips to your lower back hips knee thigh knees and feel any sensation any uncomfortable space Last time, breathe from your crown. Direct your breath through your spine, down to earth. Now, as you are breathing, if you have noticed any specific area, I would like you to place your hand to that specific area. And we will breathe through that area of discomfort, pain, blockage, whatever feeling you experienced. We will just place our hand through that specific area. Could be neck, shoulders, heart, rib cage, stomach, belly button, thigh, hip, lower back, wherever you felt. Just place your hand in that area and breathe into it with love. Let's do that. Place your hand and start breathing. Breathe into that specific area. Give it your attention. Give it your love and awareness. Release any discomfort by just breathing into that specific area. like you to do that as long as you feel that you have to do it. It might take one minute, five minutes, half an hour. Just be with that specific area and breathe into that specific area. Breathe from the heart, sending love to that area. So 
So we're gonna expand our heart and direct the breath to that specific area. Direct your breath to that specific area. Raise from your heart and direct your breath to that specific area. You can do it as much as you would love to. Just listen to your body. If you feel like moving, you feel like spinning, whatever your body feels like doing. Or maybe you just feel like being still and breathing into a specific point. Just listen to your beautiful body. Just listen and breathe. like to cross your hand and give yourself a warm, gentle hug. Hug yourself with love. If you feel like rocking, Feel like moving, spinning, just listen to your body. Enjoy your breath every single moment, wherever you are. While waiting for appointments, in the bus, in the train, in the car, you can just soothe yourself with breathing and relax your body with just breathing. You can do that for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for half an hour. As long as you feel like My dear ones, my loved ones, just breathe and smile, smile through breathing, smile to yourself. I'm sending you so much love, peace, joy. So much love, so much peace, so much joy. So much love, so much.
so much peace and so much joy. Universal song. Hello, everyone. It is my honor to be part of this wonderful event. It's an event of love, of peace, to travel through the whole Mother Earth. And it is my honor that you're allowing me to listen to this meditation of love. It is very simple, it is very easy, it's just feeling love that most of humanity have lost touch with love. So let's not talk too much about it. How about we start feeling it? So allow yourself to relax and to get a comfortable position and just breathe the way you want to breathe. yourself to be more and more relaxed it doesn't matter if your mind is taking you left and right that's totally normal and accepted then just breathe feel your body feel your surrounding feel your own energy and do nothing just feel, just experience testing your own energy, experience the feelings that you're going through right now, that's about it, and breathe. While experiencing your own energy and exploring your feelings, your aura and your chakras are being cleansed. And allow yourself to disconnect from everyone and everything, grounding yourself to earth and connected to the source. You can connect to anyone you wish to after the meditation, but at the moment it is preferable to be connected to the source, grounded to earth, and disconnecting from everyone.
disconnecting yourself from the past disconnecting yourself from your own thoughts allowing yourself to feel to be here now in this moment into your heart Just turn your awareness into your heart simple and easy thing to do just stay for a moment in your heart whatever is not serving you and serving the highest good of you let it just let it out don't think whatever is good and what's not good for you just be and allow the source allow the creator to help you As most of humans, they got used to not asking for help and not allowing the Creator to help as we think that we know better. Just relax and let it happen. Reaching out for the Creator. Allowing love to happen. Allowing love to be transmitted from every single aspect of your life. whatever is objecting to love from your world from your heart from your universe Allow your electromagnetic field to be cleansed, to remove and release whatever is there. 
objecting to love. If it was your fears, your defenses, your resistance, your beliefs, no matter what that is, just by accepting love, it will take care of all that. Just be and accept love. Bring your awareness to your heart again. Somewhere in your heart, there is a beautiful light, spark of light, or it could be bigger than a spark of light. This is the real you. The light, the love, the peace. Anything objecting to that is just what we thought who we are. It is time to experience life from this aspect, the aspect of who you really are, the love. Allow yourself to merge into it, to feel it in your heart, smile to it. Allow it to travel through your blood, through the oxygen, through every aspect of your life. Now, allow it to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Now allow yourself to be a being of love, a being of light, and accepting yourself as who you really are. It is time to transmit love. Allow yourself to transmit love. It doesn't matter who you give it to. Every being needs love. Give it to the people that you love, people you care for, Give it to people for their need. Simply give it to everyone. Give it to Mother Earth, to the plants, to the sea, to the birds, to the animals. Just be a being of love for those beautiful moments and receive all the blessings that there thanking you for being this instrument of love yes it is that simple and it is that easy once you become something useful for yourself and for the rest Blessings will come to you from everywhere. Experience it now.
This is who you are. Keep sending love. Keep vibrating love. And be aware of your own energy. How big it's becoming now. You have experienced testing your own energy and experiencing it in this meditation. Now allow yourself to feel how big is your aura. How big is your magnetic field. You're expanding and expanding and expanding even more. Allow this love in every cell in you to connect with every cell in this universe. Let the whole universe vibrate with love. The love that you accepted, that you're part of, that you wanted to, to share with the rest of the universe. Feel the universe. Feel your surrounding. This is the universe. How is it after that you gave love? How does it feel after that you became an instrument of love? Feel your heart again. This time, you're going into your inner world. After that, we gave love to the whole universe. 
It's time to give love for all the personalities that in you. Give love to all what you represent. It doesn't matter which personality comes first to you. Just give love. Just be that instrument of love that spread the love all over the universe. Just be. Give love for how do you look. Give love for how do you feel. To your status. Give love to all the good things that you did in your life. Give love to all the blessings that you are still receiving and you will keep receiving. Give love to whatever you're sitting and listening to me right now. Give love to you when you were a baby. Give love to your genetic system, to your DNA. Give love to all of your being you can choose a certain thing or you can go in general just keep spreading love it does not finish that's the beauty it just keeps flowing as much as you give and you give and you give and the more you get this is one of the laws of the universe.
way back into your body, into your mind, and you keep spreading love and being that being of love, keeping it as your major aspect of life, being a transmitter of love. back slowly, feeling your body and feeling the tremendous change in your body and into your energy. Feel the blood flow, feel the energy. into your body, slowly move your fingers, move your hands, move your toes, experiencing to be fully awake. And thank you for being part of this amazing event. Thank you very much. Love you all.